Yeah, yes. And I'm going to start putting more and more up. Yeah, and I think what I might do, thank you for bringing that up, Claire. What I might start doing also in the back half, um, I've been watching your guys' quiz numbers come in, and most of you are well past the five. You need. Some of you are ready five. It's fine. I think what I might do is start also maybe pulling random homework assignment questions for like a third quiz. Like if you want to pick up a third quiz in a given week, do E something something from the homework. And then you just submit that, and uh, I think I might just to start toughen the numbers. I mean, we're going to have a, we're going to have a, one, two, three, four, four more of these in class jaunts, plus not to mention like two per week for the next five. So if you take that's fifteen more quizzes plus the roughly ten we've already got. There's tons out there, but I also know that your guys' lives get in the way sometimes, and stuff gets in the way you can't get through. Okay. So I'll try to keep, figure out even more sneaky ways of getting more in for you. Yeah, for sure. Go. Yeah, if you do the, if we're gonna get the quiz in a moment here. You're gonna want both your names on for sure. Uh, real quick though, let's make sure we know how to run the uh, uh, box plot on the TI because it's gonna require that you do that and on the quiz. So let's fire up the TI again. Ooh. Set the mood. Sorry, it's a joke. So All right. Now, if you don't already have it done, get that histogram back up. I know it's skewed. Yeah, get that histogram back up that we just had. So that was uh, stat plot, mine's in plot one. Yep, second y equals exactly. I'm going to keep saying this because um, I, I haven't gotten around yet. I haven't had the time to make a series of YouTube tutorials on this thing. One of those things in my back burner. So plot one, second y equals plot one, histogram, boom. L6, second y equals, <coughs> second y equals, there you go. And then x list is L6, I think. We're all in L6, right? I think we are. No, we're not. But wherever you are, wherever your data is, put that list there. You might be in L1. What should the frequency be? It should just be one. It should just be one because we have raw data in there. We have raw data in there. Now you might, graph might not work. What's the bomb-proof window that will always work? Zoom nine. Zoom nine. Zoom nine will always get everything to fit. From here you can do what? You can finagle, you can mess with it, absolutely. If you want to, you don't have to right now. You can be, you can be happy with that if you want. I'm gonna turn this graph off, I've got something to apply there. there. Okay, so there's our histogram. That's what we, we, we looked at it and said, ah, it's kind of stupid. But what I want to do now is let's slap the box plot on with that. So go back to second y equals. Leave plot one alone. We want that up there, yes? Go to plot two. Turn it on. And select that you have two choices in box plot. You've got this guy and this guy. See him down here? Yeah. This one's called modified. Hold off on him for just a moment. We'll come back to him, if not today, definitely on Tuesday. But jump down to this one. If you jump down to it, you have to go right to get to it. Okay, thus far? Then press enter. You'll notice the bottom now looks just like the histogram. It says X list and frequency. Make that match your, your histogram. So mine's L6 and 1. You guys might be the same, might be different, depending on where your data is. Mm -hmm. Up to you. <coughs> What's the prospect? Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Hold that, hold that thought, Brian. Okay. Once you're here, just press graph. And you'll see a box plot with your histogram. Now you probably want to start finagling, because I hate the fact that it sits on top of it like that. I, I, so this is when I'll start messing with the window. I'll use my old math skills and I'll be like, well, if I make the Y bigger or if I change the width of the boxes, this is, I mean, I might go now to the window button. So I just press window now. We'll fix that, Ryan. Don't you worry. We'll fix it. Oh, you fix it. You. And now I'm going to make these like we did last time, 0 to 50 by 5s. Don't you want to go a little higher? Oh, no. no. Good, Carly. Yes, in general, I would. Yes, in general, I want to go 0 to 55 by 5, but nobody was at 50, so I don't have to worry about it. Thank you. Or 45 or higher, I should say. Yes. Thank you, Carly. Usually, yes. Not to worry about it here. Now just press graph, and it's getting there. I'm, I'm getting happy. I'm getting happy. I'm getting happy. And you can keep messing if you want. You can knock down the scale to 2, which gives you more bars, yes? And... The smaller you make that scale, the more and more it looks like a what? 
What did we have on the board earlier in Excel? We had a dot plot. Now, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try to make the scale one. <laughs> Fingers crossed, let's see if this works. Nope, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, and I have no idea why. So sometimes you can do that, and sometimes you get this error. So just hit quit. And you guys pick whatever whatever window, whatever uh, width you want for your bars. We'll stick with two, maybe. Which one do you guys like best? Two, five? five. What do you like the best? Five the best? Five it is. Could you do like 1.1? You totally could, Nick. You could totally go 1.1, 1 1.3. 1 the reason I don't is because if you then trace and you want to go in the bars, you got weird numbers here if you do 1.1. Nah, there's nothing wrong with it, of course. You totally can. It's just that with discrete data like this, it makes more sense to keep it whole numbers. Now, friends, if this is bothering anybody, and it's probably just me because I'm a math geek, you can raise the Y max of your window to separate these graphs out a little bit more. If, is, it, is that bothering anybody? No, not really. It is separated, but, but just, sorry, just deal with me. So the Y max is a 12.87. If you make it 15-ish or something like that, and then press graph, whew, See, I was itchy. Now I'm not itchy anymore. Not, now they're not separated. So what you now get, you get even more of a look at the variance within the four quarters because you get these tall parts of the curve where it's really tight and these long parts of the curve where it's really varied. So it's nice. I mean, it's, again, it's like having the dot plot with the box plot at the same time. <laughs> we'll get to the modified box plot momentarily. When I say momentarily, I mean like 45 minutes-ish, somewhere. That's the other box plot you can graph, which was that other choice in the second y equals. We'll go back to that in a minute. We'll go through it right now. But there you go. That's how you get a, bo a, a box and whisker or a box plot on your DI. Pretty straightforward. Heads up, those of you who love Excel, I showed you I showed you a dot, I think that was his name. I showed you a dot plot earlier in Excel. That was a song and a dance to create. It does not create dot plots easily. It also does a cruddy job of making box and whiskers. You have to do all kinds of songs and rain dances and snap dances to make it do, bo make it do box and whiskers. If anybody, if, and you, YouTube world too, if anybody ever needs a box and whisker done in Excel or a dot plot done in Excel, email me. Sroll at cocc.edu. Email me. I've got <laughs> templates set up that I can just send out to you. You don't want to set them up from scratch. They're a pain in the ass. But I could just send you the template, you can feed your data into it, and it pops up. So just let, if you ever need that for like a report or something, I'm not saying you need it for this class, but you might need it in other classes. Dot plots, uh, box and whiskers are not uh, one of the choices that Excel has. You have to kind of really get in there with wing ding fonts and all kinds of stock charts, and it's a pain in the butt. So if anybody needs it, I've already done the legwork for you. Just let me know. Cool? All right. Now, let's put this to work with the data set in front of you. Let me sure turn the camera off. Turn this off, turn the lights on. I've given you an in-class quiz to work with partners on. Yay! Yay! Yay.